Wait. Yes. All right, God bless you and welcome back once again to this revival time. We are so thankful today to continue to glorify and magnify God's holy name, a never changing God in an ever changing world. We know that God is, uh, he's the same God and we know that. And so we thank God for that because his things change around us, in us, uh, uh, through us and to us. Uh, we have a God who never changes and we thank God for that. The psalmist put one of the things like this in the 62 Psalms, truly my soul silently waits for God. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Amen. And so we are thankful tonight to be here and uh, just uh, lifted up the name of Jesus. We hope you've had a great time uh, with all the preachers who have uh, joined us this week, beginning with uh, Pastor Davis and a sermon that he did on um, alignment. And then uh, Pastor Melvin Davis and then Dr. Uh, Albert Davis on God is. And then uh, Pastor Keith Williams came along and, and uh, these guys are wrecking the place. They're just wrecking the place. Uh, come along and, and uh, with uh, his sermon and then Pastor Brown last night, hold on to God's unchanging hand uh, and just been having a great time with the Lord all week long. And so we're looking forward tonight to continue that um, we'll let me introduce uh, the pastor um, tonight. Uh, we're going to start like we usually start with uh, scripture by uh, Brother Jim Kennedy, and then I'll render a prayer, and then we'll put you in the hands of our speaker. Scripture will be coming from James, first chapter, 17th verse. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, in whom is no variableness, neither shadows of turning. May blessing be to the hearing and reading of James, first chapter, 17th verse. Amen. Amen. Our Father and our God, how we thank you so much for another, this, another preaching moment. We know, God, that you'll be glorified. And so, God, we just Thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We're excited and ignited to hear this word tonight, Lord. I want to pray for uh, our speaker tonight, Lord, as he uh, presents the message that you put on his heart. Uh, anoint him and appoint him and just have your way with him uh, at this uh, moment in time that uh, hearts might be changed not because of who he is, but because of who you are and what you've done. And Lord, we just give you praise. We want to pray for uh, Dr. Brown tonight, Lord, as we found out that right after he finished, uh, he got some news that wasn't great, but God is always great and God is always good. So we're praying, our prayers go out to him, our prayers go out for those who lost loved ones recently uh, during this pandemic. And so, but yet you are still on the throne. You're still saving souls. You're still making lives whole. And we just give you thanks and praise for who you are, what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do. And we pray this in the strong and mighty name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen and thank God. Pastor Amel Jackson of uh, the Elizabeth. Missionary Baptist Church has been pastor there for six years. Uh, he's been preaching since 1994, which is 27 years. He was ordained in 1996, which is 25 years. And uh, we are so thankful. He's a native of Richmond. And so praise God, he knows he's got a pulse on what's going on and what's been going on and how things going on there. And we are, we are all so excited 
because they'll be celebrating their 50th uh, church anniversary. Amen. 50 years of uh, holding up the bloodstained banner, seeing souls saved and lives changed. And so we're excited. He, he's a graduate with a bachelor's degree in divinity from a New Month Theological uh, Seminary. And so we just look forward to hearing from him tonight. And so I want to present to you our speaker of tonight, Pastor Lamel Jackson. Hear ye him. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Pastor Turner, thank you so much for this awesome experience from the time of time of us coming together again. Uh, we thank and praise God for the opportunity just to be able to greet you all in the love of Christ during um, times such as these. We thank God for Pastor Turner and his vision for the Community Baptist Church of Santa Rosa our family, amen. We thank God for you and for the life of your ministry and your church. We are elated. It is an honor. It is an honor and a privilege to be able to share with you on tonight. Um, and tonight, we don't want to uh, belabor the time, but we want you to go with us on this journey through the word of God tonight. And did Pastor Turner announced that tomorrow, the church where I serve as pastor will be celebrating our 50th year church anniversary. Um, that will be at 1215 on our Facebook page, Elizabeth MBC, uh, 1215. Log on, you might see some familiar faces. We have a historic uh, presentation that will be presented on tomorrow and some greetings from pastors all across the Bay and abroad that will be sharing with us on tomorrow afternoon. So if you're not busy, if your schedule will permit, we encourage you to join Elizabeth tomorrow as we celebrate our church's 50th year anniversary. Amen. With that being said, let us go into the word of God on tonight um, as this is the revival and it is my assignment to minister a word to people, to the people of God that would encourage your hearts. I wanna go to the book of Psalm, the Psalms, because that is where your theme has come from. And I, I would like to share um, verses from Psalms 102, the 102nd division of Psalm, and we're going to look at verse 24 through 27. I'm reading in your hearing from the King James Version of the Bible. Psalms 102, 24 through 27. I said, oh my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are throughout all generations. Of old has thy laid the foundation of the earth and heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment as a vesture that shall thou change them and they shall be changed. Verse 27, and it's where we're gonna hang our hat for tonight. But thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. If I could just borrow from your theme tonight, I wanna talk about a never changing God in an ever changing world. I am well aware that the theme says that uh, uh, we are an, uh, an ever-changing world and a God that never changes. But tonight I wanna talk about the God that never changed. Um, as we are uh, in this season of what has been called for approximately now the 12 months, almost 12 months of pandemic, um, we have seen and witnessed a lot of changes. Uh, we, we, we've gone from um, just being able to go casually about to a movie theater or a, a restaurant to dine um, to now having to wear masks daily. Um, and in some instances, even gloves and 
avoiding contact with other human beings because over the last 11 and a half months, things have changed. Um, what, what I do understand is that for the safety of the American people, nations upon nations have been shut down and, and, and counties have been under siege or strong restrictions because at the time of the pandemic, and I promised my church that I, was, I would never say the word again in 2021 because I even feel like things are changing even now. And so as we are in the midst of change. It's, it's literally hard not to recognize that things have changed or to even acknowledge that things will continue to change. Um, in fact, what I learned, Pastor Turner, is that change is inevitable. Can I preach just for a little while on tonight about this thing called change? Because many of us, we don't like change. We don't like when things go from being familiar to unfamiliar. Change, change causes us to sometimes be stretched or to, uh, to, to be learned or to grow or to journey into what is called unfamiliar territory. But what I will acknowledge tonight about change is that sometimes, most times, oftentimes, change is inevitable. As you begin to grow in life, you will understand that, that things that once set up high begin to drop down low. Y'all ain't gonna talk back to me like we in real church because, because if you wake up every morning, you will begin to witness that even you, your body has begun to change. The, that there was a study done that it says every seven years, the human body goes through a natural process of change. Can I share with you some things that will change? Um, people will change. Uh, the weather will change. The trees will change. The grass will change. Gardens will change. Your style of dress and the food you eat, come on somebody, will change. We are living in an ever-changing world. But, but can I share with you uh, uh, the principle about change is uh, you have to embrace the season in which you're in. It, it'll make change a lot easier when you learn the principle of embracing the season that you're in. Can, can I talk to somebody that's 45 and you still want to act like you're 25? Th those days are gone. You, you, you need to do these two things. Grow up, come on somebody, and then embrace the season that you're in. Can I talk to the person that's approaching 60 or 65 and you're still trying to dress and act as if you're in your 20s. I, I understand, and it's okay to, to be relevant, but, but here's the thing. You, you need to embrace the season that you're in because there's somebody coming along looking to you as an example of something, and, and you don't want to give a misappropriate uh, a delusion that at 60, you can still do what you did at 30, I know, I know I'm about to lose half the audience right there, but, but the fact of the matter is the best way for us to adjust to changing times is to embrace the season that we're in. And yes, although uh, this, this, this pandemic has hit and it has caused many things to change for the believer, can, can I talk to the saints of God, for the people of God, we must understand that sometimes even in church, we have been stuck and stagnated for so long, perhaps, and listen to me wisely and closely. I'm not saying God sent the virus because I don't know whether he sent it or not, but I will say this, God allowed it and it must have come for a purpose. Can, can I get real close in your church? Because for many of us in the church world, many of us knew nothing about social media. Many of us knew nothing about going on a Zoom call or a, a live conference call. But in the season of pandemic, the Lord, 
Ha, God, help us today, has allowed that that was proposed to be meant for our evil to work for our good. Now the church is not just limited to the four walls of the church, but I can be preaching to you from Richmond while you're in Santa Rosa in the midst of a revival because God has allowed us to embrace the season of change that we're in. And so, so, so before you start crying about it, let, let's look at a reason to give God praise about some of the changes that he allowed us to experience in our life. And yes, might I pose this challenging um, uh, question or principle to you, even on this uh, 27th day of February, can you praise God in the midst of the pandemic? Is there anybody out there that has a pandemic praise? Now, I know the church doors has been locked. I know they are not allowing us to worship like we're traditionally known for worship, but has there anybody that you cause your praise to follow you home? Uh, the same worship that you used to give at the church, you now find yourself doing that, praising God like that in the comforts of your own home. Did your praise stop when the pandemic started? I just want to know, how have you adjusted to the change that we're in? Listen, we're in a world that is constantly changing. If you look at the mobile device that you have now, 20 years ago, you knew nothing about a cell phone that could take pictures and send it in HD. 20 years ago, you knew nothing about a, a, a cellular unit that you could access emails and social media on. But here we are even in the midst of this changing world and we have to embrace the season that we're in because God has a way of even allowing change to work for our good. And, and so for our scripture this evening, I, I love, I love the book of Psalm because the book of Psalm is my favorite book in the Bible. It is the, what I call the hymn book of the Bible. But the Psalm is not just a book, but it is a book composed and comprised of books, uh -huh, if you will. Psalms, you can find psalms and songs and hymns and poems that were written, love stories unto God from Israel, written by many various uh, authors. Some say David, Moses, and some say uh, the sons of Korah uh, but, and prophets of old. But this particular psalm on today uh, that we are have under the spiritual microscopes began to open up in its first uh, verses with a bunch of complaints. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just going to help somebody here today. I tried to find uh, whether it was David or whether the, the, the scripture referenced that it was one of the prophets or whoever wrote it, they opened up with a lot of complaining because they were experiencing some of these changes in life. Anytime you've been afflicted by anything and you've been praying and you've been praying a long time and it feels as if God is not hearing you, then you are, you, you, you are confined to your confliction. And what I find in the ver first verses of this passage of Psalms is that the, the writer began to complain, but somewhere between verse one and to verse 24, in the midst of after all of the complaining that was going on, they literally began to review the track record of the God that created everything. And in the midst of reviewing the track record of the God that has the ability to make heaven and earth, and even though the earth is still changing, and even though life has a way of tossing us to and fro, there was one thing that the psalmist highlighted in the midst of these chapters that will never change, and that was God. Oh, God, help me in here tonight. I, I, I want to speak words of comfort in the midst of a changing world that you have a God that will never change. Ah, uh, yeah, we should shout about that because the, the same God that, that loved us enough to take dust from the ground and shape and mold man into image that's like him and then to breathe into man's nostrils the breath of life is the same God that even in 2021, in the midst of the pandemic, that has never lost his love for his creation. 
God, I'm about to preach up in this place. He's the same God that allowed us a period of 400 years of silence in the scripture so that he could prepare himself a fleshly body to be birthed with what we call the dispensation of the New Testament in the name and person of his son, Jesus Christ. He's the same God that allowed the scripture to say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe on him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life number one god's love is continual and his love for you will never change he's a never an, an ever never changing god he's an eternal god let me share with you some facts about this unchanging god there's one word that i want to highlight that is called immutable say it with me because i used to be slow too immutable god is immutable it's impossible it goes against his character of who he is for him to change he is the same god that stepped out on nothing and spoke something into existence. But he's also the same God that allowed Israel to be captivated by the Babylonians because they had strayed so far away from him. But wait a minute, he's also the same God that after they had prayed and they had prayed that he began, he sent a deliverance to the children that were in captivity. What you sign to say, Reverend Jackson, he's the same God. And although we may feel as if we've been in captivity to this pandemic, he is the same God that is still able that said, if my people, if would call by my name, would humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, seek my face, then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. My brother and my sister, I want you to be encouraged even in the pandemic because the same God that delivered Israel is the same God that's going to deliver us. In the Bible, God has always been the same. This does not mean that God is stagnant or that he's out of touch. It simply means that God's character, the essence of who he is, never changes. God is perfect in every aspect of his character. He never gets better because he's better than the best. Y'all ain't gonna talk back to me. Um, and he and it, and 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 uh, he never gets better and it's impossible for him to be worse because even on your bad day, God is still good. <laughs> he never grows old. He is never in a bad mood. God loves you as much today as he did when he made the world or when he sent his son through Christ Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. He loves you just as much today as he will a thousand years from now when all of this is said and done and there's another generation on the scene carrying on. One thing about it, you and I may change, but God will still be the same. God's love does not grow or diminish. He loves perfectly, if infinitely. We may feel sometimes like God has changed. Do you not know that sometimes circumstances and situations will try to present an opposing side to God that will cause you to be as if Christ was on the day he was dying on Calvary when he said, uh, Eli, Eli, lama sabatani, Father, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? But the fact of the matter is, even when you feel like God has changed on you, the fact is, it's impossible for God to change on you. What are you trying to say, Reverend Jackson? I'm trying to say, yes, even if you are experiencing suffering right now, it's God is still loving you through your hurts. It's impossible for him to unlove you because of your sin or because of your current circumstances. And I hear the church folk talking, well, God hates sin, but God never condemned a sinner that was seeking salvation. 
Come on here, somebody. And what I did read is that although Israel messed up, God said that, that, that gifts come without repentance. In essence, God is always willing to give you a way to escape. And so what we find in God is a secure anchor in an insecure world. His power, his ability to never change should increase our faith in him and our and our trust in him and our and our our ability to be able to rest. Somebody shall rest in God. Because when you're able to rest in God, what you simply say is that you say, Lord, my faith is so strong in you that your word says that you never sleep <laughs> nor do you slumber so why should i stay awake stressing and and tossing and turning and crying about something that i have no power over i might as well do like Big Mama told me, everything take it to the Lord in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we will not carry everything to the Lord in prayer. And I've come up to the resolve of this. Why am I going to stay awake worrying about something I can't do nothing about? When Jesus never sleeps nor slumbers, he's always on the case. So I trust you today. Trust in the Lord, rest in the Lord. And whatever it is that you're dealing with in this ever-changing world, just know that God has it all under control. As I was studying the scripture and uh, verse number uh, 27, it, it led me to where I want to get tonight. And, and I know I, if I don't preach an hour, can y'all just forgive me? Uh, but but I, I believe that, that sometimes the word of God will come quick and expediently. Y'all pray for me. Um, uh, but, but verse 27 gets down here in, the, in this chapter of the psalm. And, and what, what the psalmist realized is that after all of my crying, after all of my complaining, after I thought about God's resume and looked at God's track record, what I come to the resolve of is that uh, he said the first word in verse 27 is but. <laughs> you, you got to watch but because but is a conjunction word. It connects something that was said to something that's getting ready to be said. Y'all still with me? Uh, uh, you, 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 you need to have um, in your life, in your current situation, in this ever-changing world, a uh, but. Uh huh. Uh, I, I know that they said that we have a vaccine now. I know that we've been out of church for a long time, but can I just speak words of encouragement and revival to the body of Christ? This too shall pass. And, and, and if you was in church today, I'd say lean over to your neighbor. Don't touch them. Just look at them and say, God's getting ready to turn this thing around. That there's a but even in the midst of this pandemic. The, the psalmist says, after everything that I reviewed between verse 24 and verse 26, I'm now at the point where there is something else is getting ready to happen. If we was in church, I'd say high five your neighbor right there and say something's getting ready to happen. I, I can say so long to number 45 out of the White House because we got many days under a new administration and I feel in my sanctified soul. And this is just my feeling. I don't know how you feel, but I do feel like things are about to get better. Come on, somebody. I got a feeling like grandma would say, the, uh, I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. The psalmist said, but thou art the same. Out of this ever changing world, there's one principal fact that God is the same. And when you think about that God is the same, it would lead you over to the Hebrew writer in the New Testament. I don't wanna cross contaminate uh, the scripture, but one thing about God is him being the same, he's always consistent. He never changed his mind about what he said the first time. If he called you once, he's gonna keep calling you until your response is yes. See, some of us want God to do some different things for us, but we haven't committed to the first thing God called 
called us to do. It's a consistency in God. And what I found is there over there in the book of Hebrews around the first chapter, uh, th this same particular Psalm is recorded by the Hebrew writer. And what he describes is that he leads us to a place over in the 13th chapter, stay with me now, of the book of Hebrews, where he says this about the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus the same yesterday and today and forever. Listen, anytime, anytime, if you know anything about God, there's a consistency about God. Uh, the Psalm said it in the Old Testament that God does not change. When Jesus came to earth, he was the in God incarnated. He came to earth to fulfill the things that God wanted him to fulfill in the earth realm. He came to teach men how to love. He came to teach men how to speak up for those that were less fortunate. I, I'm getting ready to get out your way, but I got to tell you about Jesus. He had been on the mind of God from the beginning of time. When they said, let us make man in our image, Jesus was standing right there. When it trickled down through generations, uh, by a prophet by the name of Isaiah said that a, a, a virgin will be filled with child, will conceive a child, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, a Mighty God, an Everlasting Father, a Prince of Peace. He was talking about Jesus. And then it runs on down to the New Testament when Jesus was preparing to be born, that the angel appeared to Mary and to Joseph to let them know that when this baby comes into the world, his name shall be called Jesus. And because what we do know about it is that whenever you get through at the end of the day, there's something about the name Jesus that you just can't get away from. I don't know if you ever had to call on him in the midst of this ever-changing world, but when you call the name Jesus, things begin to happen. And what I learned about him is that demons begin to tremble and even obey at the mention of his name. I'm going somewhere with this. I know we've come out of an ever-changing world, and we're in the midst of an ever-changing world, And but God is still the same, and his son, Jesus, is still the savior of the world. And all I'm trying to get you to understand is that there is no name given under heaven whereby men might be saved except for the name of Jesus. What are you trying to say, Reverend Jackson? I'm saying what the Hebrew writer said over here in chapter 13 and verse number 8. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, Day and forever. Jesus is still able to save you. And the only way you can know an, ever, an unchanging God in an ever-changing world is you must know an unchanging Jesus that is suitable for your situation. I know we say he'll never change, but can I tell you something? Sometimes he will metamorphosize himself into becoming everything that you need him to be. His character does not change. But when I need a heart fixer, he becomes my heart surgeon. When I need a mind regulator, he becomes my therapist. Y'all ain't gonna talk back to me. When my foot or I began to slip, he becomes my podiatrist. Come on, somebody. When I need somebody to hold my hand, he becomes a father figure to me. When I need a friend in the midnight hour, he becomes a friend that to the friendless, whatever I need him to be, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And he will be whatever you need him to be in the midst of this ever-changing world. He traveled down through 40 and two generations. He stayed the same Jesus. He never said a mumbling word. When they led him from judgment hall to judgment hall, he looked at them. They asked him who he was. He said, that's what you say. I don't have nothing to say. They led him up a hill called Golgotha, nailed his hands and nailed his feet. And the only thing I heard him say that when they lifted him up, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He didn't never change. He never changed on the enemy. Even the enemy he understood served a purpose in his life. And then I heard Jesus say, it is finished. And into your hands, I command my spirit. And even when his lifeless body was taken down off an old rugged cross and placed in a borrowed tomb, they stayed there Friday and Saturday. When Jesus rose early Sunday morning, I heard him when he said, I have all power in my hand because I am the same Jesus that was 
dead, I am alive forevermore. And then it runs all the way to the point of the scripture when Jesus was preparing to board that, that 747 cloud back to glory. When I heard the angel, while they were standing there talking to the disciples as, as Jesus was ministering to them and telling them to wait for the for the um, indwelling of the Holy Spirit to fall in the book of Acts, the Bible says that Jesus began to get taken away on a cloud and the disciples were standing there. And while they were standing there looking up, they saw Jesus go up and ascend into the heavens. And while they were standing there, I heard an old angel and I'm gonna get out your way. But the angel said, why stand ye here gazing? Looking up. The angel's words was this, the same Jesus that you see taken away today, oh God, he's coming back again. But when he comes back again, he's going to be riding a white horse of victory because he's going to claim all of those. The Bible says we're not all going to sleep, but we all shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. When the trump shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Look at your neighbor and say, he's an unchanging God in an ever-changing world. You'll be blessed this evening. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, a never changing God in a never changing world. What a blessing for uh, Pastor Jackson to preach such a powerful message. And, you know, we don't, the time is not the issue. I've never heard anybody complain of a sermon too short. But boy, in that time, you. You packed in a lot, you unpacked a lot for us. And we thank God for you, for the messenger. We thank God for the message you brought today and letting God use you. Boy, we're excited and ignited one more time again. Amen. During this uh, time of revival. So our blessings uh, to Elizabeth for the 50th anniversary this year. Amen. We know they're in good hands under Pastor Jackson. He's been doing a mighty work over there. And uh, we just thank God for uh, him letting God use him. And uh, just don't forget, you know, if these preachers along the way have blessed your heart, show them in a tangible way. Don't just say hallelujah, amen. Uh, you know, send them, send so we can send them some, uh, a comforter is what we call, you know, because this is work but also it's pleasure, but at the same time, it's their time away from their families, their homes, and other places. They could be doing other things, but they took the time out of their day and out of their life to spend time with us, to bring a message to us, and we want to show them uh, our thanks for doing this all week long, and it's been a blessing all week long. Amen. And I look forward uh, to tomorrow to ending this thing out you don't want to end. I don't want to I always have to go into the next few weeks, but amen. What a blessing it has been for this revival we've done. And we hope that you've been blessed. And I just want to, one of the things we really want to make sure that if you if you uh, have not received Christ as your Lord and Savior, then all you have to do is ask him to come into your heart. The Bible says he stands at the door and knocks. And if you open that door, he'll come in and sup with you and you with him. And so ask him to come in to your heart today. And then if you do know him, then talk to him about developing a closer relationship. We can all, we can all stand and get closer to God. But there are some things that, that we need to change. Amen. Because God is not going to change. And so we thank God. So if you need to forgive somebody, forgive them. If you need to uh, visit somebody even during this time, I know you can do it. Or call somebody, or anything, you know, do start. Uh, God has something for us to do, not just sit at home and look at our computers and be shouting in our house, but what, you know, what, what are you doing for God's sake during this time? 
He still wants us to be, to make disciples. He still wants us to serve him. He still wants us to minister, minister right where we're at in the capacity that we have. And <clears throat> let me say this. Church is and always has been in you. Amen. The Bible says your body is the temple of God. Not the building. Your body is the temple of God. This pandemic has taken us away from uh, socially gathering as Christians and doing what we do traditionally. But the church, the temple has always been in you. So if you, can, if you don't know how to get somewhere uh, in your home or by yourself somewhere, just have a, good, have, a, have a little talk with Jesus, have a good time with Jesus, you need to develop that. So there's things we can do uh, right now. So we thank God for all that's been done this week. Uh, let us pray. Father, we thank you tonight for being so good and so kind. We thank you for loving us, God. And thank you for never giving up on us and continuing to shape and mold us, Lord. Uh, you are the potter and we are the clay. And all, you, all we need to do is be on that wheel, spin it around, Lord. But in that spinning, in that spiration, let the Holy Ghost have his way in our hearts and lives. But let this message not fall on just deaf ears and for the moment but that it goes forth beyond this time and that somebody shares with others the good news of Jesus Christ. So we give you all the praise and honor and glory so that you deserve. We thank you for loving us so much and showing us your love to these ministers who have come throughout this week. And uh, we give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.